Karen had to go to the hospital the other day. As soon as she entered the building, she felt there was something wrong about that place. Walking along the corridor, she saw two nurses. Which nurse is fake? The one on the right. Look, her shoes are dirty and she barely knows how to hold a syringe. Stay away from her, Karen! Adam is a successful IT specialist who works 24-7 from home. He rarely goes anywhere, but a week ago, he decided to go on vacation. He packed his bags and left. A week later, when he came back, he instantly noticed there was someone in his apartment while he was away. Since he lives alone, he immediately called the police. Why? Before he left, there was a bin full of papers and candy wrappers. When he came back, the bin was empty. Adele just loves traveling and does it any time she can. She took some days off and headed to the airport to go to a new destination. That morning, there were only four flights. Paris, departing at 7 a.m., New York, departing at 7.30 a.m., Los Angeles, departing at 8.05 a.m., and Sydney, departing at 8.10 a.m. Where's Adele flying? To Sydney! Look at her suitcase. It has several stickers on it. A sticker with the Statue of Liberty means she's already been to New York. The one with the Eiffel Tower means she's traveled to Paris. And look at the I Love LA sticker. Hey, have a good time in Australia, Adele! Ryan owns a multi-billion dollar corporation. It's been several months since he started searching for a new head of one of the departments, but he still hasn't found one. Looking through the new CVs his secretary left on his desk, he realized one candidate lied about their experience. Who was it? There are three CVs. Each of them has the candidate's age, work experience, and education. But how can someone born in 2000 have a PhD in economics? When Jessica came home from work, she noticed that someone stole an expensive painting from her bedroom hanging right above the bed. She immediately called the police and explained what happened. She said she didn't touch anything in that room, and when she noticed the painting had been gone, she called them to investigate. The police arrested her on the spot. Why did they arrest her? Jessica said she hadn't touched anything, but the bed is perfectly made. If there had been a robbery, the bed would have been a mess. It wasn't possible to get the painting without stepping on it. A wicked troll caught Marge and locked her up in one of the rooms in his castle. He said it was impossible to get out of that room even though there were three exit doors. All of them were equipped with motion sensors. If Marge opens the first door, it'll start a mechanism that fills the room with toxic gas. If Marge opens the second door, it'll start another mechanism. A motion sensor will see the movement and a super heavy weight will fall down immediately. Behind the third door, there's a swarm of venomous mosquitoes no one can get through. Despite it all, Marge managed to escape. How did she do it? She tricked the motion sensor behind the second door into thinking it was her moving there. But in fact, she just threw her shoe in that room first, the heavyweight fell down, and Marge ran away. Without a shoe. You have five pencils. Green, blue, and orange ones are short. Red and yellow pencils are long. You need to arrange them in a special order. Long pencils are next to each other. The green pencil is between the orange and the red pencil. The pencils on the edges are of different sizes. The fourth pencil is short.
The correct order is yellow, red, green, orange, blue. You work in a supermarket and need to arrange three boxes from lightest to heaviest. You know that the yellow box is heavier than the black one. Two black boxes weigh the same as the yellow and pink boxes combined. Okay, this was pretty simple. First goes the pink box, the lightest one. Then you need to put the black box, and then the yellow one, the heaviest. Hey, you got to do weird things at work. Detective Hugh followed a criminal. Unfortunately, he didn't know what he looked like because the criminal would always wear a hood and large sunglasses. The detective knew exactly that he was hiding in one of the three houses in Maple Street. When Hugh came up to the first house and knocked on the door, a man opened the door and said he lived alone. He also said it had been several days since he last left home. He claimed he didn't know anything about that criminal. The detective inspected the house and instantly realized the man was lying. How did he understand it? There's an umbrella hidden behind the sofa. The umbrella is wet and there is a small puddle on the floor. This man is either the criminal or he's trying to hide one. Mike was driving back home in Chicago in winter when a blizzard started. The weather was awful and Mike thought it would be safer to spend a night in a hotel and wait until it stopped snowing. The hotel was a bit iffy, but since it was for one night only, Mike thought it was okay. The next morning, when he checked out and came up to his car, he noticed something was wrong and called the police. What was the problem? The car is covered with snow. It's okay since it's been snowing all night long, but the windshield is clean, which means someone must have taken his car. Simon grabbed a really nice muffin in the cafe and put it on his office desk. He wanted to save it for later and eat it at the coffee break. But when he came back from a meeting, he saw someone had eaten his muffin. There are only three people who could do that, and only one is telling the truth. Jack says it was Ashton. Ashton says he didn't eat anything. Tyler says he didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tyler. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Ashton. If Jack or Tyler told the truth, then it would be two people who were telling the truth. But Simon knew only one person wasn't lying. A vampire recently moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and asked Detective Ryan to help them out. A couple of days later, he already had three suspects. All of them recently moved to that city. Ryan visited all of the suspects, and he was sure he found the notorious vampire. Who is the vampire? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires can't stand it. The second suspect has lots of silver cutlery in the kitchen, and he doesn't mind eating with a silver fork. No vampire can do that. The guy in a hoodie is the vampire. Hey, looks like someone has to move again. A man went to a houseware store to grab something for his new apartment. If he grabs one good, it costs $1. If it's 13, it costs him $2. If it's 138, he'll pay $3. What did he buy? The goods he needed were the numbers for his apartment doors. He lives in apartment 138, so he bought three numbers for $1 each. A scientist created a robot, Jason, who looked exactly like a human. 
One day, Jason ran away from the scientist's house because he wanted to start a life on his own. Hey, maybe he could be roommates with that vampire. The police started looking for him immediately, but the scientist had no photo of Jason. They soon realized Jason was hiding in the swimming pool and went there to investigate. There were four men in the swimming pool claiming they had spent almost an hour swimming, and the police asked them to do one thing to prove they're not robots. This way, they found Jason in no time. What did they ask them to do? They asked them to show their hands. Those who had wrinkly fingers after swimming were real people. The one with smooth hands is a robot. Emily told her boss someone had stolen the report she prepared for the meeting. She also added that she had noticed someone come in wearing a hoodie to hide their face, a black tracksuit, and gloves. This person also had a ring with a large gem. The boss didn't believe her. Why? She said the person was wearing gloves. Then how did she see that ring then? Emily must have simply stained that report with coffee she drinks all the time. Jim goes hiking and gets lost in the woods. After a while, he gets really hungry. Jim wanders around and finds these three options, but only one of them is safe. Can you help Jim make the right choice? All the footsteps are leading to this berry bush, but not a single animal walked away from it. So the berries are probably poisonous. There's a scorpion creeping around these delicious bananas, so Jim should choose the apple tree. Timmy is packing bags for a hike in the mountains. Can you sort out extra items? It's unlikely he's going to need a hairdryer. Timmy's already taking a flashlight, and he probably won't have access to electricity. Therefore, he doesn't need this table lamp. And finally, he shouldn't take this heavy silver cutlery. A frog is at the bottom of a well. The well is 30 feet deep. The frog climbs up 5 feet every day, but it slips back 4 feet every night. After how many days will the frog be free? Twenty-six days. Wow! The frog climbs up by just one foot per 24 hours. So in 25 days, it will be at the level of 25 feet. And on the 26th day, it will make the final 5 feet jump and get out of the well. Billy here wakes up in a creepy cave and finds four tunnels leading outside. He only has one chance to escape. There's a hungry tiger inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is filled with dust and spider webs. Yuck! There's a water-filled tank with sharks inside the third tunnel. And the fourth tunnel is full of venomous snakes. Uh Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Billy should choose the second tunnel. There are no spiders in this picture, only the webs. Crawling through them might be unpleasant, But at least he'll stay safe. Three tourists go hiking and get into trouble. Surprise, surprise. Can you guess who has more chances to survive? The third person. Although rats are gross, they're not fatal. Diana's boat was wrecked, and she ended up on a tropical island. The locals speak an unknown language, so Diana can't understand them. But still, she managed to spot this guy's wife right away. Can you see her too? It's the third lady. They have similar tattoos. Wendy is walking in the woods and falls into the trap of evil elves. She offers their king a deal. 
If I write your exact age on a piece of paper, you'll let me go. The king agrees and gives Wendy a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, he lets her go. How did she do it? Wendy literally did what she said. She wrote your exact age on the paper. Ah, clever girl. Stan is walking home in a haunted city. He finds a nice spot to shoot a TikTok. But unfortunately, he falls into a basement. Stan looks around and finds four doors out. There's a hungry dragon behind the first door. The second way is filled with intense fire. There's a desert filled with hungry piranhas behind the third door. And venomous snakes are waiting behind the fourth door. Which way is the safest? The third one. Piranhas live in water, so they wouldn't manage to survive in the desert. Therefore, they're not dangerous for Stan. Jessica gets lost in the desert with just one small bottle of water. She has no clue where the nearest water source is. What would you suggest? Run as quickly as possible to find more water? Pour all water on her head to avoid sunstroke? Find a shady place and rest? Stay where she is and shout for help as loud as possible. The third option is the best. When it gets darker and cooler, she can walk further and find help. Tilda is boarding a private jet. The crew greets her and she spots an imposter among the crew members right away. Can you see this person too? The pilot is wearing a badge with a female face and name on it. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's ID. Tyler wakes up in the morning and finds out that his shadow is gone. Uh He goes to the local witch. She offers to choose from these six options. But only one of these shadows really belongs to Tyler. Can you spot which one? Only the first shadow fits perfectly. Nina and Sarah are both fond of swimming, but one of them is making a big mistake. Can you guess who? Nina. The sign says that the water in this river contains toxic waste. Meanwhile, Sarah can easily surf in large waves. Kyle and Betty go to a remote village to spend a romantic weekend. They see a cute little farm on the way and buy some pomegranates. They go on a picnic and enjoy the fruits. Each of them eats half of the pomegranate. In 10 minutes, Kyle gets very sick. Betty takes him to the hospital. Doctors check everything and come to the conclusion the pomegranate was poisoned. Kyle and Betty ate the same food and drank the same drinks all day. How is it possible that Betty still feels well? The poison was in the white seeds. Kyle ate them whole, while Betty only the red part. Allison is jogging in a park. Suddenly, she comes across an angry brown bear. It's getting closer and closer, but Allison manages to survive. What did she do? Started running as fast as she could? Fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious? Or stood still and didn't move? What do you say? Usually, brown bears only attack people when they're surprised or feel threatened. Allison fell to the ground, and the bear didn't consider her dangerous. Peter is hiking in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he sees a mountain tiger in the distance. He's trying not to panic and begins to Uh look for a place to hide. There are three possible options, but only one of them is more or less safe. Can you help him make the right choice?
If Peter climbs this tree, the tiger can easily get him there. Tigers actually like to swim. That's why it's not safe for Peter to escape by boat. But if he hides in this cave and blocks the entrance with a stone, he can call rescuers and wait for evacuation. Alice is 45 years older than her son Tom. Both of their ages contain prime numbers as the digits. Also, Alice's age is the reverse of Tom's age. Can you figure out their ages? The only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Here's a list of possible age combinations. 32 and 23, 52 and 25, 73 and 37, 53 and 35, 75 and 57, 72 and 27. But only the last combination meets the first requirement. The age difference should be 45 years. Therefore, Alice is 72 and her son is 27. Polly is an archaeologist. She excavates an ancient city. Suddenly, she finds a beautiful antique vase, or vase if you prefer. But one piece is missing. Polly also finds these ceramic fragments. Can you help her find the missing piece of the vase? The fourth fragment fits perfectly. Dan lands with a parachute in a field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Been there, done that. He finds the nearest bus station to get back to the city. But only one of these four buses will arrive at the station. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. You can crack this maze much easier if you start drawing from the final destination. Amy leaves her workplace to go to the bathroom. She returns and finds out that someone had stolen all the cash from her wallet. Amy checks the wallet surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own. The next day, Amy questions three of her co-workers. Mike says, Sorry, I've been out for lunch when the robbery took place. Oliver says, I've been feeling sick all morning, so I went home early. And Will says, I've been having a conference call with their clients. Can you spot the thief? It's Oliver. Take a look at his trash bin. He used gloves to steal the cash and then left them in the trash. He's the clumsy culprit. While Miss Virginia Dell was away on her summer vacation, her house got robbed. Three people were caught on the security camera and they became the main suspects. Ayla, Virginia's best friend, said, Uh, I've been coming to pick up mail. Sophia, the housemaid, said, I've come every Wednesday to clean the house. And Danica, the gardener, said, I come every Friday to take care of the garden. Who robbed Miss Dell? It must have been Sophia, the housemaid. She said that she cleaned the house every week. But look at the house. It's very dusty. She's shady, and she must be the main suspect. Last Friday, Mary sneaked out to a party without asking her mom's permission. Her mom found out about it and grounded Mary for a month. No friends, no parties. Two weeks after that, there was another party, and Mary couldn't miss it. The morning after the second party, Miss Roberts walked into Mary's room and asked her what she'd been doing in the evening. I was solving my new puzzle, the girl answered. Mary got grounded for another month. Why? Take a look at the puzzle. She's barely started it. It doesn't look like an evening-long activity. Jane was a straight-A college student, but her friends hadn't heard from her in a week. When she didn't show up for an exam, her best friend got concerned. She came to visit, but Jane wasn't home. So, she reported that Jane had been kidnapped. There were three suspects, all of them Jane's ex-boyfriends. Michael, Miguel, and Daniel. All of them denied being in any contact with the girl. Who should be arrested?
The note on the fridge is a clue. It looks like a recipe, but it's not. It's the number of letters you should take from each word. Two-fourths of milk gives us M-I. Then we have C-H, then A, E, and L. It seems that Michael has something to do with Jane's disappearance. I'll be showing you combinations of emojis, and your task is to guess what fruit or vegetable they stand for. Here's the first, very simple one. What do you think it is? So there's an egg and a plant. So, of course, it's an eggplant. The next one. This time, it's not so obvious. Do you have any ideas? It's a ladyfinger. Good job. Off to the next one. I wonder if you can get this one right. A car and a rat. A carrot, of course. Now let's add some letters to help you. What about this one? What's your bet? O and a leaf. That's an olive, of course. Okay, here's the next one, and I know you'll get it right. Some sugar, or rather something sweet, and a potato. Of course, it's a sweet potato. Okay, now it's getting a bit more complicated. What's your call? There are two types of people who love it and those who can't stand it. It's cauliflower. Okay, and here's the last one for you. Q, a comb, and a bear. Cucumber. Great job with these ones. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She was wandering around until she found the road leading to the house of a witch, her old friend. Esme approached the house, but the witch wasn't there. <laughs> Instead, there were four open portals. On the table, Esme found the witch's to-do list. Can you figure out which portal the witch entered? The first two tasks on the witch's to-do list are completed, so she's most likely left to catch some frogs. The number in brackets must mean the number of sides each portal has. 10 is a star, 3 is a triangle, 4 is a square, and a 0 is a circle. To catch some frogs, she must have used the portal that looks like a square. Cindy was a kind and beautiful girl in her junior year. Two best friends Dylan and Kobe wanted to ask her out to prom. So the guys decided to ask Cindy's best friend which of them liked Cindy more. The girl didn't want to share her best friend's secrets, but she gave them a hint. Cindy loves pizza, but she can't stand burgers. She likes to go to the pool, but never goes to the gym. Her favorite animal is the llama, but she's afraid of zebras. Which of the boys does Cindy like? Cindy's friend wanted to give the guy a clue, so we have to look for some pattern. All the things Cindy likes have double letters in them. Dylan has the double L in his name, so he must be the one Cindy likes more. Kate woke up in a dungeon and couldn't remember what had happened to her. The place didn't look safe, so she decided to get out. The door was open and she left the room, walking down the hallway. Several minutes later, Kate stopped in front of two elevators and one door with an exit sign on it. Is it the way out? In any case, the door was locked and required a password. Can you guess what the password is? Pay attention to the numbers on the elevators. They say 13 and 11, so the password must be 1311. 
In a small, quiet town, young men started to go missing. The police had been looking for them for many months and couldn't find any traces. But one day, they discovered an abandoned basement in an old swimming pool. Inside, there were three young men who claimed they had been held there for three months. One of them was the kidnapper. But who? Look, one guy doesn't have facial hair whatsoever, and another man has grown a beard since he hasn't shaved in three months. But this guy is freshly shaved, so he must be the kidnapper. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes stuff he'll never need. So he needs your help with some packing. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look at his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric hairdryer. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now look at what Oliver has packed for his vacation in Egypt, where he'll be staying in an all-inclusive hotel. Is there anything he won't need? Is that laundry detergent? Yeah, you don't wash your clothes yourself in an all-inclusive hotel. Now he's off to his girlfriend's place to spend the weekend with her. What does he have in his bag that he really won't need there? Is it a roll of toilet paper? I think it's very likely that his girlfriend has that. Oliver is going to visit his grandparents and stay with them for a week. They live on a farm where there are cows and horses. Oliver is going to chill and do some gardening. Now check his suitcase. What's there that he won't need? I don't think he'll need his tuxedo. He'll most likely be wearing some casual clothes all the time. Yasmin is wandering through a forest and sees a spooky house. As soon as she steps inside, the door behind her back slams shut. It's the house of an old magician who doesn't like visitors. But there's a chance for strangers to escape. There are three drinks. The red one will turn Yasmin into a mouse for an hour. The green one will allow her to fly for an hour. The blue one will make her breathe fire for an hour. Which drink should Yasmin choose if she wants to get out? Yasmin should drink the red liquid. She'll turn into a mouse and will be able to escape through this little hole in the front door. Sheila participates in a beauty pageant. The next catwalk will take place in 30 minutes. Sheila leaves her stuff in the dressing room and goes outside to talk on the phone. After that, she returns oh, no. and sees that someone has torn her costume. Sheila gets furious and questions her rivals. Millie says, I was getting my makeup done, so I sat in my chair motionless and I couldn't look around. Chelsea says, I was in a toilet. I think I ate something wrong for lunch. And Isabella says, I was outside the dressing room filming stories for my subscribers. Who is lying? Millie. She said she got her makeup done, but why did she ruin it by putting on a face mask? Sheila goes to the storage room to find a new dress. Suddenly, the door slams shut behind her. Oh, no. She needs to enter an eight-letter password to open the door. Sheila needs to be on the stage in five minutes. Can you help her crack the code? This picture on the wall is a hint. Sheila needs to enter paradise. Sheila opens the door and meets face to face with creepy rats. She runs away and gets lost in the basement. Sheila finds these three doors leading to the stage, but each door is hiding some danger. 
There are broken wires and a puddle of water on the floor behind the first door. There's a scorpion behind the second door waiting to bite Sheila. And there's a magical portal leading to the top of a mountain behind the third door. Can you help Sheila make the right choice? She should choose the first door. There's enough space. Sheila can crawl underneath the wires. Sheila enters the stage and spots three uh -oh. weird details in the auditorium. Can you see them too? Take a closer look at this lady. She's holding a book upside down. This musician is playing the violin without any strings. Also, there's a panda among the viewers. Sheila becomes a beauty queen. She gets a diamond tiara and a paycheck. She goes backstage, but suddenly all lights in the building go out for a few seconds. When the lights turn on again, oh, no. Sheila sees that someone has stolen her tiara. She questions three rivals. Zoe says, I don't want your cheap tiara. My dad is a billionaire. Jasmine says, Someone pushed me in the dark and scratched my dress. Rachel says, You must have dropped it on the floor. Look better. Who stole the tiara? Zoe, it's hidden under her diamond necklace. The next day, Sheila wakes up in a creepy castle. A wicked witch turned her into a monkey. To break the black magic, Sheila needs to use a spell. But the spell book is locked in a box. The lock requires a six-digit code. Can you help her open the box? There are exactly six candles on the shelf above the box. It's a hint. Each candle has a particular number of dots. So the code is 243621. There are four big houses in Sheila's neighborhood. All four are standing in one row and they have different colors. Red, green, white, and blue. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the green house. The third house in the row is white. Mrs. Snake owns a red house. And Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end of the row. But she lives somewhere to the right of the blue house. Meanwhile, Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. And the first house isn't red. Can you decide who lives where and what the color of each person's house is? From the clues, we know that the first and the third houses can't be red. Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. Therefore, Mrs. Snake, who owns the red house, can only live in the second. Since Mrs. Crystal doesn't live at either end, she must live in the third house, which is white. Mrs. Jones's house is somewhere to the left of the greenhouse, which means that Mrs. Dillon lives in the fourth house. As for Mrs. Jones, she lives in the first house, and it's blue. Can you spot a fake teacher? The guy on the left isn't a real teacher. He's an actor. Take a closer look. There's a rec camera icon at the top of the screen. Two friends want to cross a river. The only way to get to the other side is by boat. But this boat can only take one person at a time. The boat cannot return on its own, and there are no ropes or any other similar tricks. Yet both guys manage to cross the river using the boat. How is that possible? The guy started on the opposite banks of the river. Josh and Bob are twins. Josh lives with his wife, and Bob lives alone. Can you guess which one is Josh? It's the first guy. He has a pair of toothbrushes in his bathroom, while Bob only has one. 
A time traveler is attending this party. Can you spot this person? This lady's shoes look too old-fashioned. Chuck enters a spooky building where he's supposed to have a job interview. Suddenly, someone locks the door and now Chuck is trapped. He wanders around for a while and sees these four doors. He also finds a note. Only door three is leading to the job interview. The remaining doors will take you to the black hole. Good luck. Can you help Chuck choose the right door? No need for luck, Chuck. The symbols on the door are actually numbers. So, Chuck should enter this door. I talk to you, you talk to me. Every day, you hold me. Yet, I can't smell you. What am I? I'm your mobile phone. A gentleman and a lady are talking. The person with black hair says, I'm a gentleman. The person with blonde hair says, I'm a lady. At least one of them lied. Can you guess the hair color of each person? If only one of them lied, they would both be gentlemen or both be ladies. Therefore, they both lie. It means that the lady has black hair and the gentleman is blonde. Can you spot what's wrong in this picture? There's no milk in the jug. Can you see anything odd in this picture? The image in the mirror is not reflected. Can you spot a vampire? This guy over here. Fiona is a young witch. She finds these four portals in a haunted castle. Fiona chooses one of the portals and enters. You can hear city noises from the first portal. You can hear sea waves from the second portal. You can hear leaves rustling from the third portal. And bells are ringing from the fourth. Which portal did Fiona enter? Fiona's dirty footprints on the floor are leading to the third portal. Don't mind the different sounds, this could just be a magic trick. Billy finds himself on the roof of a skyscraper that is about to crumble. The only way out uh -oh. is to use one of these four elevators. There's a werewolf hiding behind the first elevator. If Billy chooses the second elevator, he'll fall hundreds of feet. Super venomous snakes are crawling all over the third elevator and mutated scorpions are waiting for Billy inside the fourth elevator. Just one bite will make him fall uh -oh. asleep forever. Which way should Billy choose? The first one. Take a look at the sky. The moon is not full. So the werewolf is harmless. Rachel meets three of her former school friends in the parking lot. All three want to impress Rachel, so they begin to discuss their new cars. Melanie says, I wanted my car to be one of a kind, so I bought this one. Peter says, Since I'm a beginner, I purchased the cheapest used car. And finally, Samantha says, I bought a large car because I have a big family. Rachel spots a liar right away. What about you? It's Samantha. Her car key doesn't match the logo on the car. Now, Foggy is a friendly ghost living in the attic of an old house. Every night, he goes for a refreshing walk around the house for four hours. Foggy doesn't like one month of the year, because that month, 
he gets to walk around way less than the previous months. What's the month and why? It's February. There are just 28 days and nights in February, and 29 on the luckiest years. So fewer nights and less time for Foggy to walk around. Just a month ago, Autumn and her family moved into a new house. Everyone loved it, but Autumn was sure that the house was haunted. She doesn't know it yet, but our old friend Foggy is the ghost that lives in her attic. He is a friendly ghost, so once he left her a message written on a mirror. Autumn woke up and saw this. Can you help her read the message? It's a code. Autumn should ignore the numbers and only look at the letters. The note says, Do not be afraid. I am foggy. And who are you? Right before Halloween, when everyone was dressed up and carefree, all the creatures flooded a little town trying to blend in. Detective Callum was on duty to identify all the imposters and keep an eye on them. He has a couple of leads, and your task is to help him find all the monsters. Deal? The first one we need to find is a vampire. The vampire lives in one of these two houses. Can you tell which one? Look, there is garlic hanging in this house. Vampires can't stand garlic. They prefer cilantro. So it cannot be a vampire's house. So the vampire lives in this one. Perfect, let's move on. One of these houses belongs to a centaur. Do you have any idea which one? Hmm, it must be this one. Pay closer attention to the path to the house. There are footprints of horse hooves. Centaurs have an upper body of a human, but a lower body of a horse, which explains the prints. The centaurs must be living here. The next one we need to track is a mummy. Take a closer look at these two apartments. Where does the mummy reside? Now, did you notice the bandages all over the room here? It must belong to the mummy, so I bet that's his place. Now it's time to track the Cyclops. Keep your eye out and make your best guess. Did you notice this strange object in this room? It looks like a pair of glasses, but it only has one lens. Well, that's because it belongs to a Cyclops. They only have one eye. So that must be his place. Okay, we only have one last creature to identify, a gnome. Here are two apartments. Which one does the gnome live in? Did you notice that the mirror in this apartment hangs a bit too low? That's because gnomes are short. He must be living here. Other creatures that have flooded the town are robots. For Halloween, some people started to dress up like them, too. Look at these three people. Can you find the fake robot? Look at their footprints. The robot on the left has human footprints in the beginning that only later change into tire patterns. He must be the fake robot. Let's train your eyes a bit. Here are Halloween emojis. All of them but one has a pair. Can you find the one that doesn't have a pair? Great job! Here it is! Okay, one more time. Now there are even more emojis. Do you see the unique one?
Here it is. Good. Now, let's proceed. A month before Halloween, Daphne moved into a new modern house that was built in the early 2000s. It was a great house, but Daphne got it for a very low price because it was believed to be haunted. The girl didn't believe in that, so it didn't bother her one bit. On Halloween night, she returned home after midnight. When she walked into her room, she saw a ghost floating there. The ghost looked at Daphne and said, You know what? You can't live here. It's my house. I've lived here for a hundred years, and you're making me uncomfortable. (laughs) Daphne said that the ghost was lying. Why? The house was built in the early 2000s, so it's barely 20 years old. The ghost couldn't have lived there for a hundred years. That's right, ghosts lie. It is Halloween night, full moon, all the creepy things, but Eslin went to an abandoned spooky house in the woods alone. As soon as she walked in, the door behind her got shut and locked. She wandered around the house and found three doors leading out, but they didn't seem safe. Behind the first door, there was a werewolf. Behind the second door, there was a zombie. Behind the third door, there was a ghost. Which way is safer for her to choose? Eslin should definitely choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't do her any real harm. Of course, Eslin wasn't the only one who went to the house that night. Another student, Colton, dressed in the silver armor of a knight, decided to explore the spooky house too. Just like with Eslin, the door got shut behind him right after he stepped into the house. He found three ways out too. Behind the first door, there was a vampire. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon who hates strangers. Behind the third door, there was a huge cyclops that would crash anyone who walks in. Which way should Colton choose to stay safe? Luckily for him, he is dressed as a knight in silver armor. Vampires are afraid of silver, so the first way is totally safe for Colton. On Halloween night, Kennedy wanted to spend the evening with her boyfriend, but her dad was against her dating anyone. To go around it, she lied that she was going to trick-or-treat with her friends and promised to be home by midnight. She returned at 11.30 p.m. Yet her dad got mad at her and demanded to tell him where she really was. Wow, how did he understand that Kennedy didn't go trick-or-treating? She returned with an empty candy basket. Outside of town, hidden in the woods, there is a house where a group of friends live. A mummy, a mermaid, a ghost, a werewolf, and a witch. Every Halloween, they eat candy. There are five creatures, but this year they only have four chocolate bars, and they don't know how to split them equally. Maybe you have an idea? They should split each one of the four bars into five pieces, and then each creature gets a piece from each bar. This way, everyone will eat exactly four pieces of chocolate. Now that monsters and humans live next to each other, let's try to identify who is who. I will be showing you photos, and your task is to find a monster in each photo. Here's the first one. Can you find the monster? Look, this guy's skin is green. He's definitely not a human. Here is the next photo for you. Be attentive. Do you see someone who is not a human here? This girl in the swimming pool is a mermaid. (laughs) Good job. Okay, here's one more. It's quite hard, but I believe in you. 
Who do you think is not a human here? Look, this woman doesn't cast a shadow. Now this is not normal for a human being, so she must be some other creature. Great job! Here's another one for you. Which one do you bet isn't a human? This person is carrying a wand. She must be a witch. This is probably the hardest one. You have to keep your eyes wide open. A photo of a local cafe. Do you see something suspicious? Look, there's a glass of blood in the air, as if someone's drinking it. It must be the vampire who's drinking it. But the vampire isn't in the photo because they can't be photographed. Ugh, technicalities. Dana is a swimming champion, preparing for her competitions on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her, and the police suspect three other swimmers. Hmm. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but the missing swimmer refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. Hmm. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? Ashley knows where Dana is. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to have her hair done before a competition. Laura was walking home from work when she heard screams coming from a nearby house. She immediately rushed in to help. She followed the voice and it guided her to a basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Three portals opened in front of her. Only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant venomous spiders. In the second portal, there was a huge, suspended rock that was supposed to crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, seven hungry crocodiles were waiting for their next victim. Can you help Laura choose the right portal? Laura should pick the second portal. She can throw her shoes inside, wait for the giant stone to fall to the ground, and make her way around it. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day, the captain asked him to go to the hold and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. Sometime later, he discovered there was a hole in the side of the ship. More and more water was getting inside through this hole. How can Daniel get out? can put on one of the life jackets that are in the room and wait for the water to fill the hole. This water will lift him and he'll be able to push the door open. Look at this man and three women attentively. Can you figure out which one of them is his real wife? It must be the girl on the left. Look, unlike the other two girls, she has nothing in her hands. At the same time, the man is holding a purse, which, if we're honest, doesn't match his style at all. <laughs> ben and his girlfriend, Amelie, went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a guy and a young woman. Huh. The man, bearded and rough-looking, had a shovel in his hands. Hmm. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. Hmm. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Oh, no. Follow me. I've been stuck here for way longer than him, but I think I know where the exit is. Hmm. Who should Ben and Amelie believe? Ben and Amelie decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for so long, 
Why did she look so tidy and have fresh flowers in her hair? Look at this image. Can you figure out who came from the past? It's this guy. Take a closer look at his chest. He's wearing a shirt frill. Those were popular in the 19th century. How about this picture? Who's from the past? I bet it's this young girl. Look at her weird hat. And now, will you be able to spot the time traveler? It's this lady. Have a look. She's wearing clogs. Nature photographer Lydia was out taking pictures of trees and flowers in the park. She stopped when she noticed some weird chemical smell in the air. She took photos of all three factories in the area. When Lydia looked at the images later, she immediately realized which factory emitted toxic gas. Can you figure it out too? It's not the first factory, it seems abandoned. The second one is surrounded by trees and flowers. It means the smoke coming out of its funnels is safe. It's the third factory that's the toxic one. The trees around it look dry and unhealthy, and the flowers have turned black. At the airport, a furious traveler claimed that the contents of his baggage had disappeared. When I got my suitcase, it was empty. I want compensation. After checking the passenger's info, an airport worker found out that he had indeed left London with a heavy suitcase. And now his bag was empty and a bit wet. But don't you think the whole situation is a bit suspicious? Hmm. Can you figure out what probably happened here? The passenger left London with a suitcase full of ice. During the flight, the ice melted and the water leaked out and the man demanded compensation for his lost belongings. Lauren cooked 10 buckets of chicken wings for a family gathering, one for each guest. But later, it turned out that Jimmy hadn't gotten his portion. Someone had taken two buckets. Is it Uncle Patrick? He looks suspicious. Or maybe it's Lauren's son, Justin. He's wearing this creepy knowing smile. Or could Jimmy himself hide his chicken wings to get another portion? <laughs> what do you think? Where are the wings? Look at the dog! It wouldn't leave Uncle Patrick's side. It can smell the meat the man has hidden. Damien was at work when he found out he'd won the lottery jackpot. He told his accountant he wanted to give half of this money to his best friend, Logan. Yeah. But random people started showing up in the office calling themselves Logan to deceive the accountant and get the money. Oh. Can you figure out who the real best friend is? It's the guy wearing a matching bracelet with Damien. Oh. Emily was standing on one side of the river, and Anna was on the other. Anna shouted to Emily to come and meet her, and Emily did that. There was no bridge across the river, but she crossed it anyway without even getting wet. Hello. How did she do it? The river was frozen. Three people were stopped at the security check in an international airport. They were suspected of smuggling different stuff out of the country. The first man was heading to a beach resort. In his suitcase, there was a lot of stuff you could use at the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second man had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and a bottle of expensive shampoo. Who's the smuggler? Fire. 
It's the third guy. He's bald. Why would he need this shampoo? Five men were fishing in a boat not far from the shore. A big wave turned the boat over and all the men fell into the water. And still, not a single man got wet. How come? All the men were happily married. Stephen was driving to work when he realized he had left a folder with important documents at home. Oh, no. It was about 9 a.m. when he entered his house and saw a man leaving through the back door and running to a red car. Stephen called the police and told them about what had happened. Oh, no. Police officers didn't waste time and went to look for the criminal. After searching for 10 minutes, they spotted a similar looking car near a cafe. When they entered the place, there was only one customer there. One of the police officers came up to him. Is it your car? Where were you 20 minutes ago? The customer answered, Yeah, the car's mine, but I've been sitting here for more than an hour. The police officer immediately arrested him. Can you figure out why? The police officer noticed that the cafe only opened at 9 a.m., the guy couldn't have spent an hour there. Hmm, Hazel is a rock climber. She's packing bags for an expedition to Everest. Can you spot any extra items in her suitcase? It's unlikely that you would need these fancy high-heeled shoes in the mountains. Also, this fragile vase is useless on a hike. Hazel orders a taxi to go to the airport. She's using this app. There are four free cars in her neighborhood, but only one of them can reach Hazel's home. Can you tell which one? It's the third car. Hazel arrives at the airport. She takes a closer look at her ticket and faints. Can you guess why? The name of the airport on the ticket doesn't match the airport that she's in. Hazel needs to go to the correct airport as quickly as possible. These two drivers are eager to give her a ride. Can you tell who will reach the destination faster? Although the second car looks more expensive and chic, it has a flat tire. Therefore, Hazel should choose the first driver. Finally, Hazel boards her flight. She falls asleep right away. She wakes up in a while and realizes that someone has stolen her phone. Hazel questions three suspects. Bill says, I've been watching a movie within the last hour. I didn't look around. Sorry. Kyle says, I was sleeping too until you woke me up. And Sheila says, I'm afraid of flying, so I listen to soothing music with my eyes closed. Can you guess who stole Hazel's phone? Nobody. She just dropped it on the floor over here. See? It's dinner time. Kyle offers Hazel his dessert if she succeeds in guessing the date of his birth. Here's a hint. The day before yesterday, Kyle was 22, and next year, Kyle will be 25. Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? Today is the 1st of January, and Kyle's birthday was on the 31st of December. Therefore, Kyle was 22 on December 30th. Then he turned 23 on December 31st. This year, he will turn 24. And the next year, 25. Finally, Hazel lands in Nepal. She enters the baggage claim area and sees three odd things right away. Can you see them too? There's a dog in this bag. 
animals don't come with regular luggage. This baggage cart lacks all wheels and floats in the air. And these boats are parked outside the window along with the planes. Hazel arrives at the meeting point for climbers at the local restaurant. But there's no one there. The cleaning lady says, I was busy cleaning the toilet and just got back. I didn't see anyone. The guard says, oh yeah, the meeting has been delayed for tomorrow, that's for sure. And the waiter says, I've been here all the time and I haven't noticed any crowds of tourists. Who's lying? The guard. See this sign? The meeting takes place on the roof. That's why they didn't see the tourists. On the way to the roof, Hazel sees a woman who's cleaning a window on the 10th floor. Suddenly, she slips and falls. She doesn't have any safety equipment and nothing to soften her fall. But yet, she's not hurt. How can this be? The woman was cleaning the window inside the building. (laughs) Finally, Hazel meets her group of climbers. But one of these people is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy has tentacles instead of a hand. He's definitely not from this planet. Hazel goes on an expedition with the group. She stops to take some pictures and gets lost. In a while, Hazel finds three roads leading to the next mountain village. But every path hides some adventure. There's a hungry snow leopard walking on the first path. There's a herd of Himalayan yaks on the second path. And road 3 leads through an avalanche risk area. Any movement can make the snow slide down. Which way is more or less safe? Hazel should choose the second path. Although these yaks look pretty scary, in fact, they're friendly plant eaters. Hazel checks into the local hostel. She leaves her bags in the room and goes to see the sights of the village. After a while, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her passport. Hazel calls the sheriff and he interrogates four suspects. The hotel manager says, I was dealing with a tourist group that has just arrived. I didn't notice any robbers. The hostel owner says, I was dealing with the bathroom clog all day. The gardener says, I didn't enter the hostel. I was watering the roses in the garden. And the cleaner says, I was too busy feeding fish in the lobby. I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cleaner. Can you see any aquariums in the lobby? Hazel visits a local restaurant. The cook offers her three meals to choose from. Can you help her pick the safest option? There's a worm in these instant noodles. And there are too many flies around this rice. It's probably not very fresh. So, Hazel should choose this sandwich. In the village, Hazel meets the local guide, Luke. He offers to show Hazel the shortest way to the top. But first, Hazel has to solve his riddle. Luke and his wife have seven children. Half of them are sons. How is this possible? Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? They are all sons. Luke and Hazel begin the trip. On the way, he offers Hazel to visit the local magic caves. Hazel agrees, but eventually she gets lost inside one of the caves. She wanders around for a while and finds these three tunnels. There's a portal to the sun in the first tunnel. There's a box with an ancient magic gemstone inside the second tunnel. This gemstone curses anyone who sees it. And finally, the third tunnel hides a bunch of poisonous scorpions. Which way should Hazel choose to survive?
The second one? The gemstone is locked in the box, so Hazel should just walk by it. Hazel needs to cross this toxic swamp to continue her trip. The only way to do so is to jump from one block to another. Can you help her choose the last stone wisely? Each block has a particular number – 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. This sequence is formed by adding the number 4. Therefore, the remaining block should be 25, not 27. Hazel continues her journey and finds this weird sign engraved on a rock. Can you help her crack the meaning of this code? The arrow is pointing to the right. The message is mirrored. If the P-O-T is on the right, it means that the T-O-P, or top, is on the left. Now Hazel knows the right direction. It's getting really cloudy. It'll rain soon. Hazel decides to hide in one of these three caves and have some lunch. Can you help her pick the safest place to stay? Take a look at the tracks. The first cave is probably home to a family of bears. Mother bears can get furious when it comes to their cub protection. As for the second cave, it's obvious that a human being has entered it and come back out, which is encouraging. And now, let's take a look at the third cave. A human entered it but never came out. Therefore, Hazel should choose the second cave. Finally, Hazel reaches the top of the mountain. Suddenly, a kind wizard pops out of nowhere and greets her. He suggests Hazel relocate to a hidden magic world. He says, I'll show you the gates if you solve my riddle. So listen carefully, I'm very fragile, and even just saying my name could break me. What am I? Any ideas what it might be? The correct answer is silence. The wizard chose Hazel the gates. There are three doors, but only one of them leads to the magic world. Can you help Hazel figure this out? Only the second path leads to the final destination. Bye bye both Harry and Terry's girlfriends went away on a business trip for the weekend. During the whole time, the couples were texting and sending each other pictures. On Sunday morning, the girls asked their boyfriends to send them their selfies. Harry sent a selfie where he was smiling in the kitchen. Terry sent a selfie of himself in the bathroom. One of the girlfriends knew immediately that her boyfriend was cheating. Who was it and how did the girlfriend know? It was Harry. Look at that lipstick mark on the glass on top of the kitchen counter. Becca and Tom are a couple. One of them rented a scooter from Brown Scooters and now needs to pay for the ride. A worker from the scooter company comes to charge the couple $15 that they owe. Becca and Tom start arguing over who should pay for the scooter. Becca says that Tom was the one who wrote it, so he should pay for it. But Tom says that it was Becca who wrote it and she should pay for it. Who is lying? Becca is lying. Take a look at Becca's footprints. They lead directly to the scooter. There were three thefts at a local supermarket. One in February, one in May, and one in July. Thankfully, the security camera recorded the footage of those three days. The store manager called Detective Moore, asking to solve the crime. The detective took a close look at the footage and noticed one detail that helped him solve the mystery. Take a look at the images and try to figure out who the thief is.
In all three videos, there is a pregnant lady. In the video from February, she looks about seven months pregnant. But in the other videos, from May and July, her belly looks exactly the same. This means that she is the thief. She must have been faking her pregnancy all along. Dr. O'Brien invented the time machine and traveled all the way back to prehistoric times. Take a look at this picture and see if you can spot Dr. O'Brien amongst other prehistoric people carrying out their activities. That's easy! It's the guy with the flashlight. He must have taken one with him when he set off on his journey. Katie was running late for class. When she finally arrived at the classroom, she accidentally dropped the pile of textbooks she was holding. It produced a loud thump, making the entire classroom stare at her. At that moment, Katie drew the attention of 20 eyes. How many people were in the classroom that day? There were 11 people. 10 people have a pair of eyes each, right? Add Katie to the equation. That makes a total of 11 people in the room. Police officer Dave received a call late at night. A famous chemist went missing from his lab. After searching the lab thoroughly, Dave found a note with ransom numbers scribbled on it. The note read 26, 3, 58, 28, 27, 57, 16. Based on the note, Dave managed to find the scientist and arrest the criminals who had taken him. What was written in the encrypted note and how did Dave understand it? The chemist is smart. Each number in the note corresponds to an element in the periodic table. So the element that corresponds to 26 is Fe, iron. Number 3 is Li, lithium, and 58 is Ce, cerium. If you use this logic, you can figure out that the first line spells Felice, and the numbers in the second line stand for Nicholas. After figuring out the names, Dave tracked the men down and arrested them. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to play it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument inside her room and left. When she got home in the evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members as they always played pranks on one another. So she questioned each one of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. Her dad said that he had seen it when he passed by Helena's room, but he swore he hadn't done anything to it. Helena's brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery instantly. Can you figure it out? Her dad was lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by the girl's room. But that's impossible. Helena locked the door when she left. A bank was robbed by masked strangers. One of the robbers asked the teller to give them all the money hidden in the bank safe. But suddenly, the teller's phone rang. It was his mother. The robber told the guy to pick up the phone to avoid arousing suspicion. On the phone, the teller asked, Is there an emergency, mother? Call me when you get home and I'll help you with the dinner. Then he hung up. Five minutes later, while the robbers were still in the bank, the police arrived at the crime scene. How did the police know about the robbery? The teller was smart. While he was speaking on the phone with his mother, he pressed the mute button while he was saying some of the words. So what his mother heard on the other end of the line was, emergency, mother, call help. On the outskirts of a town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed and left him behind. There were terrible crashing sounds coming from the house, and then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. 
How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there was lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. A famous hotel has seven floors. Five people are staying on the first floor. Eight people are staying on the second floor. Eleven people are staying on the third floor, and so on. Each next floor has three more people living there than the previous one. Which floor calls the elevator most often? The first floor. Any person staying on a floor other than the first has to call the elevator to reach their destination. In a small town, three teachers asked for sick leave on the same day. Janet said she had got into a car accident and broke her leg. Now she was having difficulty walking with the cast and all. Emma complained she'd had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck. She couldn't even turn her head. And Tina said that she'd fallen from her bike and hurt her arm. One of the teachers is lying. Can you tell who? It's Janet. She claims she's having difficulty walking with the cast, but she doesn't even have crutches. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You hear a monster coming, so you check the door quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, Take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, It's the right door. The third door has a sign, Freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign saying, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? Well, there's a little bit of wordplay here. Let's see why. The first door says to take the door on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? You can interpret this statement as pointing at the door just on your right. Well, that's it. It's the last door. It does tell you not to trust the other signs, but it doesn't tell you that they're false, does it? James arrives at a beautiful haunted hotel in the mountains. He meets three people in the lobby, Gemma, Mike, and Peter. Each person claims to be the hotel manager. Can you help James figure out the real one? Take a look at Gemma. She's holding a badge with Mike's picture. And according to this badge, Mike is a cleaner. Meanwhile, Peter is holding a passport with Gemma's picture. Therefore, she's probably a guest. So Peter is the real manager of this place. Peter gives James this key and says, It's from our best penthouse. The room is yours if you manage to find the matching keyhole. Can you help James accomplish this task? He should choose the third hole. James should choose one of these three elevators to get to his room, but only one of them is safe. Which one would you suggest? There's a ghost hiding in the mirror inside the first elevator, and the third one doesn't have any floor, so he should use the second elevator. James is walking down the hallway and spots three weird details. Can you see them too? The doors are numbered completely out of order. This painting on the wall is moving, and there's a snake hiding inside this plant.
James enters his penthouse, but he immediately runs away screaming. Why? Someone's invisible hands are playing this piano. James asks Peter to give him another room. Peter offers him three options. Which one should James choose? There are spiders on the bed sheets in the second room, and there's a werewolf hiding under the bed in the third room. So the first room is the best choice. James unpacks all his things and finally goes to the shower. After that, he returns to his room and finds out that he had been robbed. Can you spot what exactly was stolen? A box of matches, shoelaces, and a book. James gets very upset because he keeps all his cash in the stolen book. He calls the police, but there's no service. James hits the road and gets stuck in this traffic jam. Can you figure out which car should move first? The third car should move first by reversing. Finally, James arrives at the police station. He sees these two women behind the bars. One of them is the wife of the jail guard. Can you guess who? The second lady. They're both wearing similar pendants. Detective Green listens to James's story and goes to the hotel. He finds three suspects and asks them only one question. Did, uh, did you enter James's room after he moved in? Mike replies, Nope, I cleaned this room early in the morning and I haven't entered it since. Maya says, I live next door and I heard James singing in the shower, but I didn't enter his room. And Peter replies, No, sir, I was in the lobby the whole time. I would never risk my job by stealing a stupid book. Can you spot the thief? Peter, Detective Green never mentioned what exactly was stolen. The hotel owner fires Peter and offers his job to James. James agrees. The owner wants to check his logical thinking. That's why he offers James to solve a riddle. Can you find anything similar between the front of a lady and the back of a seal? The correct answer is the letter L. James gets the job. His first task is to take care of these four new guests who have just arrived, but only two of them are real. Can you guess who? The first lady is a ghost. Take a look at her feet. She's levitating. And the fourth guy is a thief. He's stealing a credit card from the second person's bag. So only the second and the third person are actually the guests. James goes to the restaurant to have some dinner. The cook serves him a big dish with sushi. But James didn't wash his hands, so he leaves for the bathroom. When he returns, he sees that someone has eaten a couple of items from his plate. James questions three suspects. Gemma, the guest, says, Honey, are you kidding me? I'm allergic to all kinds of seafoods. Tim, the waiter, replies, I was too busy. I took an order in another part of the hall and didn't look at your table. I'm sorry. Carl, the cook, says, That's too bad. I made this sushi only for you. Who's lying? Gemma, if she's allergic to all kinds of seafoods, why did she order this lobster? James goes to the hotel basement to check the storage room. This is how it looks right now. And this is how the storage used to look in the morning. Can you spot what's missing?
two buckets, one mop, and one bathrobe. James gets lost in the basement and finds these three doors leading upstairs. Each door hides something surprising. There's a creepy clown behind the first door. There's a hungry wolf behind the second door. And the third way is filled with toxic gas. Which way is the safest? The first one. Although the clown is creepy, who said that he's dangerous? There's a power outage throughout the hotel area. About an hour later, at 10 p.m., the local mechanics finish all repairs and turn the lights back on. James returns to the lobby and faces one of the guests, Nancy. She's crying because someone had stolen all the money and gadgets from her room. James finds three suspects and asks them just one question. What were you doing within the last hour? Kim says that she was just chilling in a restaurant and had nothing to do with the robbery. Alex spent all his evenings skiing in the hotel ski resort. And Robin had just arrived from the city, and it was quite a quest to find the hotel in the dark. Who's the thief? Alex, how would he ski in total darkness? James goes to the shower. He finds these three bars of hotel soap, but only one of them is safe to use. Can you guess which one? The first soap had expired a long time ago. Take a look at the date. It was made in 1980. And there's a little scorpion hiding under the third soap. So James should definitely choose the second one. James decides to have a walk around the hotel before sleep. Unfortunately, he gets lost in the garden. Now he needs to get out of this crazy maze. Can you help him out? Here's the only way to escape from this trap. Carl, the local cook, is making an exclusive soup using his granny's recipe. He mixes all the ingredients except for one last one. Suddenly, the wind blows off the recipe and the sheet of paper with the recipe flies into the fireplace. The cook is desperate. He doesn't remember the name of the last ingredient, but he knows for sure that it stands on the shelf with seasonings. Also, he knows that the soup should be orange. Can you help Carl finish the dinner? When you mix red and yellow, they turn into an orange. That's why Carl should add red and yellow spices. James reads the hotel reviews online. Lucy writes, They gave me a room with a garden view, but I wanted mountains. Ah, but the food is still amazing. Giselle says, This hotel is so noisy and dirty. Carpets in the lobby are stained. Gross. One star. Jessica writes, OMG, last night I saw a ghost in my room. This hotel is really haunted. One of these reviews is fake. Can you guess which one? The second review isn't real. There are no carpets in the lobby. Sarah accidentally pulled a lever in a science lab and set free a group of mutant zombies. The four humans left in the lab needed to escape before the zombies caught up. To do so, they needed to cross an old rope bridge hanging over a massive gorge. According to the professor's calculations, the zombies would catch up with the lab team in 17 minutes. They needed to get everyone across the bridge before that. Sarah was the fastest one in the group. She could cross the bridge in one minute. The lab assistant, Dawn, could cross it in two minutes. But the janitor and the professor were way slower. The first needed five minutes, and the second needed ten minutes to get to the other side. They also only had one lantern left. 
How could they arrive at the other side safely if the bridge could only hold two people at a time and each group needed to carry the lantern to illuminate the way? Here's how it works. Sarah and Dawn cross the bridge first, carrying the lantern. It takes them two minutes. Sarah, the quickest, runs back with the lantern. Then, the professor and the janitor cross the bridge together. It takes them 10 minutes. In total, it takes 13 minutes. Dawn grabs the lantern from them and dashes across the bridge to help Sarah get across. With two minutes left on the clock, Sarah and Dawn get safely to the other side just in time to cut the rope and save their lives. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to start playing it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument in her room and left. When she got home that evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members as they were always playing pranks on each other. So she questioned each of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. Her dad said he'd seen it when he'd passed by Helena's room, but swore he hadn't done anything to it. Her brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery right away. Can you figure it out? Her dad is lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by her room, but that would be impossible. Helena locked the door on the way out. John, Carl, and Ben are sitting on a park bench. One of them arranged to meet his two sisters. He promised them he would take them on a stroll in the park. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Ben. Look at his wrist. He's wearing two bracelets, probably made by his younger sisters. Josh was walking in a forest at night and came across an old castle. He was curious, so he found a way to sneak in and started walking down a corridor. Pretty soon, he met three cloaked figures. When Josh asked them who they were, they said they were two werewolves and one vampire. The trio told Josh that he had made a bad choice coming inside the castle. They said they wouldn't leave him unless Josh outsmarted them. Josh had to guess who the vampire was. According to the rules, he was only allowed to ask each of them the same question, and the question couldn't be, are you a vampire? After a few minutes of thinking, Josh asked, what's your eye color? He guessed who the vampire was and was allowed to leave the castle. Why did he ask that? And how did that question help him? Vampires don't reflect in mirrors, and they don't show up in photos. The vampire probably wouldn't know their eye color. One afternoon, four friends met up for coffee. Someone asked them how old they were, and they answered with a riddle. They said Mia was three times older than Anna, but three years ago, Anna was younger than Claudia is now, and Olivia is twice as old as Anna. So, can you put the girls in order according to their age? The correct order is Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Claudia. Mary's birthday was coming up, and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During the massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money was missing from her purse. There were three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed that she'd been having lunch at the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. Monica, a customer, said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her turn. What do you say, Sherlock? Who did it?
The culprit is Catherine, the masseuse. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the stash of money hidden behind the oils. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a small dog. It looked as if the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into an office building. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the dog's owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on a dog's leash. You've just come back from a long trip. You had to get a new suitcase to store all the things you bought. But after arriving home, you realize you've forgotten the code you need to open the suitcase. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone that can help you decipher the code on the lock. 682. One digit is correct and in the right place. 614. One digit is correct, but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are correct, but in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right, but in the wrong place. What's the three-digit code? Zero, four, two. One morning, Detective Smith arrived at the jail where three men had escaped from their cells. The prisoners could neither see nor talk to each other, but they managed to organize their escape together. They visited the same shower room, but only one person was allowed to come in at a time. How did they manage to communicate? They wrote messages to one another on the bathroom mirror, used the steam to read them, and planned their escape together. On a Sunday morning, seven friends went to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each, while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret to figuring out the answer is in the girls' names. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two letter E's in their names. In the afternoon, three people visited Tessa's clothing store. These three people were the only customers she had that day. The first person bought a belt and a purse. The second person bought a dress. And the third customer got a hat. One of them was a criminal, and Tessa reported them to the police immediately. Who was the criminal, and how did Tessa know? The third person gave her a $1,000 bill, but such bills don't exist. At 11 a.m., Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon had three suspects. Elijah said he had spent the previous evening in the movies. Mason took his girlfriend to dinner. And Evelyn visited an art gallery. It didn't take Amy long to understand who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. It isn't torn, which means he didn't really go to the movies. Jack is in a cold cell. There's only ground under his feet. In the cell, there is one window, but it's impossible to escape through it. It's located too high above the floor. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Oh the man needs to get out of the cell as quickly as possible. He can't dig a tunnel and go deep underground since the walls are really thick. 
Jack would get exhausted long before finishing digging his way to freedom. Can you guess the easiest way out of the cell? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Ava has been wandering through the desert for days. She's tired, thirsty, and hungry. Finally, she arrives at an oasis. Yes. But to get to it, she needs to choose one of three paths. At the entrance of the first path, there's a huge dragon with two heads. In the middle of the second path, there are hungry tigers. And the third path is swarming with thousands of scorpions. Which path should she choose? The first path. Dragons aren't real, so she'll be safe there. <laughs> Jenny walks into a cafe and orders a cappuccino. Hello. The cashier tells her it's her lucky day. She'll give Jenny her cappuccino for free if she manages to answer a riddle correctly. Yes. The cashier says, There are two buckets filled with water all the way to the top. The buckets are of the same height, but the temperature of the water inside the first bucket is 25 degrees Celsius while in the second bucket, it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit. If a person drops a coin in each bucket at the same time, which coin will hit the bottom of the bucket first? It takes Jenny a few minutes to answer the riddle, but she gets it right. Can you guess what she answered? She said that first, one of the coins would hit the bottom of the first bucket, it has to do with the state of the water in each bucket. At 25 degrees Celsius, water is liquid, while at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns into ice. Emily finally went to Paris. On her first day, she bought a baguette and some cheese and went to the park to have a picnic. Mm. She sat down and cut the baguette into four pieces. A random person next to her said, nice. Hey, it took you 12 seconds to do that. Can you figure out how long it would take Emily to cut the baguette into eight pieces? It would take 28 seconds. Here's how it works. To cut a baguette into four pieces, she needs to make three cuts. If it takes her 12 seconds to make three cuts, it means that she makes one cut in four seconds. Now, if she wants to cut the baguette into eight pieces, she'll need to make seven cuts. So, seven cuts, four seconds each, 28 seconds. Every Sunday, Mrs. Moore gives her four daughters some pocket money. Half of the entire amount goes to the eldest daughter, Brianna. The second sister, Amy, gets half of the amount Brianna gets. Kate gets one-sixth of the total amount. And the remaining $10 goes to the youngest daughter, Nikki. How much money does Mrs. Moore give to her daughters? Once again, Brianna gets half of the money. Amy gets half of the half, which means one quarter of the original sum. And Kate gets one sixth. They are all some fraction of 12. So Brianna gets six twelfths, Amy gets three twelfths, and Kate gets three twelfths. Together, this adds up to 11 twelfths, which means that Nikki gets 1 twelfth, which equals $10. The whole sum is 12 twelfths, which is $120. Brianna gets $60, Amy receives $30, Kate is given $20. Hey, if I were Nikki, I would complain. Ms. Taylor is the owner of a boutique that produces and sells expensive ceramics. On a Friday, when the working week was almost finished, she went to put the day's earnings in the safe and was shocked to find out that the money was gone. Someone had stolen it. <laughs> Miss Taylor suspected it was one of her workers. She asked each of them what they'd been doing that day. Sloan, the sales manager, said she'd been looking for new clients. Jake, the potter, said he always made one cup a day. And he showed all the cups he had finished that week. Lily, the designer, said she'd been working. But she also admitted she hadn't really been productive that day because of some family issues. Hmm. Who lied? Jake, there are five working days in a regular week. 
The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Probably the day he needed to steal Miss Taylor's money. Two cars, blue and red, started traveling on the same highway at the same time. The blue car is going at a speed of 60 miles per hour, and the red car is going 40 miles per hour. However, after some time on the road, they come across each other at one point. How is this possible? Well, they're traveling in opposite directions, so eventually they would pass each other anyway. Carl was a rich man who had two grown-up sons, Ethan and Christian. They lived in a big mansion. One day, Carl noticed that his expensive ancient vase was missing. The only people who were at home the night before were his sons. He didn't want to involve the police, so he decided to interrogate the guys himself. Hmm. He saw Ethan driving through the gates. He was back from his daily visit to the gym. The young man said that the night before, he'd been practicing guitar and hadn't noticed anything strange. Then, Carl met Christian near the pool. The guy told his father, Now I understand. Yesterday, I saw Ethan putting a box in the backseat of his car. It must have been the vase. But Carl immediately realized it was Christian who had taken the vase. How did he know? Because Ethan drives a sports car, it only has two seats. He couldn't have put the box in the back seat. It means Christian is lying. Ooh. A math teacher told his students about Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw just one line and turn nine into six. His only condition was that the students couldn't take their pens off the paper until the line was finished. Mark was the first one to complete the task. How did he do it? He drew the letter S in front of I, X, and got six. There's a patch of magic grass in a field, and it doubles in size every day. If on day one, it's just a patch of grass, on day two, it's twice bigger, and so on. It'll take 10 days for the grass to cover the entire field. How long will it take the grass to cover half of the field? The patch of grass doubles in size every day, so on the ninth day, half of the field will be covered with it. In a kingdom far, far away, an old king lived. The king was worried he had no heirs to his throne. One day, he came up with an idea. He decided to give each child in his kingdom a seed. He promised to make the child who grew the most beautiful plant his heir. Three months later, thousands of children came to the palace. All of them had amazingly tall green plants in their hands, but one girl had a pot that was empty. However, she was the one the king chose to be the future queen. What made him do so? It turned out that the king had given the children fake seeds. The girl turned out to be the only honest kid. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, 